Question number one. Jackie Dean. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, how does growth in the average wage compare to cost of living increases of 0.4 per cent over the last year, according to labour market data released by Statistics New Zealand yesterday? Uh, the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, data from Statistics New Zealand yesterday show that the average annual wage is now over $57,300, which is over $10,000 more dollars than when National first came into office in 2008. Over the last year, wages have increased by 3.1 per cent, which is considerably higher than the rate of inflation at just 0.4 per cent. Of course, the 0.1 per cent increase in unemployment to 6 per cent is higher than we would like it to be. Uh, but we should note that while the HLFS noted the first quarterly fall in jobs in three years, the quarterly employment survey, released on the same day, recorded filled jobs increasing by 0.7 per cent and hours worked increasing by 0.9 per cent. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Jackie Dean. To the Minister, what is the Government doing to assist firms to grow jobs and deliver higher wages? The Honourable Order. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the Government, of course, recognises that it is businesses that create jobs, and what the Government does is to create an environment and a platform from which businesses can have the confidence to invest and employ more people. Uh, that is what this Government is doing, for example, by reducing income taxes to increase incentives to work, reducing ACC levies, uh, spending $110 billion in infrastructure over the next 10 years, negotiating the TPP and also the new uh, Korean FTA. And all the business growth agenda has nearly 500 initiatives in it, uh, Mr Speaker. And these are all being used order, to encourage order, businesses to... Order. There are five people to my left who have consistently interjected since question time started. If any of those five, and I'm happy to name them if there are any doubt as to who they are, if those five continue to interject, then they will be asked to leave the chamber. Does the minister wish to complete his answer? Supplementary question. Oh, is our point yes. of order, the Honourable David Cunningham. I confess I was one of the five, and part of the reason for the disorder, sir. Order. But the point of order, I want sir, the point of order. Is uh, what guidance can you give the House about the maximum duration of ministerial responses? Order, order. I've given that guidance on many occasions, and I'm sure the member's been here. I am the sole judge as to the length of answer. Supplementary question, Jackie Dean. Thank you. To the Minister, what does recent data show about businesses' hiring intentions, particularly in respect to the services and manufacturing sectors? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, as I mentioned earlier this week, we saw weak economic growth in the first half of the year, in part due to the significant fall in dairy prices. More recent data points have been more positive, including last week's ANZ Business Outlook survey. That survey reported higher investment intentions, increased employment intentions, higher profit expectations and a lift in residential investment intentions. Other data indicates that the services sector is seeing the largest expansion in activity in eight years and we've now seen a record 36 consecutive months of growth in manufacturing. There are of course risks to the outlook from the weak global economy but overall the country remains on track for continuing moderate growth. Supplementary question. Jackie Dean. Thank you. To the Minister, what does the latest data from Statistics New Zealand show about employment outcomes for young people? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the data released yesterday shows the outcome for young people are increasingly positive, with a number of 15 to 24-year-olds not in employment, education or training, down to 11 per cent, which is the lowest level in seven years. Within that, the figure for 15 to 19-year-olds has fallen to the lowest level ever recorded in the survey. It's the lowest level ever recorded. It's particularly positive that this fall is due to more young people participating in education. Question number two, James Shaw. 